So, how many times can I use the excuse college is hard before you guys start to get tired of it? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am Seb. This is still Superficial Charm. And <laughs> I have made so many videos and then deleted them because I didn't think that they were good enough for the channel. Um, when I make a video, I really don't want to do it halfway anymore. Uh, I started slipping and just making content uh, that I thought would make me happy and when I watch it back it just comes off rushed and I don't think that's something that I want to do I don't I don't want to come off rushed so um, from now on when I do post which <laughs> I say this every time, but I hope to post more. I, I really do. Uh, but I want to make it quality. Um, so, we are going to get into some music that I have missed over the past uh, two months. And I'm going to try my very best to um, just catch you guys up on some songs that I've been vibing on. Uh, here pretty soon, I'm gonna open my social medias to suggestions. And if I mess with the song heavy or really, really, really despise the song, I'm probably gonna review it. Uh, that's in addition to the songs that I find and listen to and I hope to do some throwback reviews, some stuff like that. I've been saying that for months, but I think this time I really want to do something like that. Uh, <laughs> I am at home, as you can see, for for spring break, but the, uh, the big germ uh, may be shutting down my school for the rest of the semester. I might have to do online classes. We'll just, we'll see what happens. So without further, we are going to get into the first single on the list. The first single comes to us from TikTok and you may have heard it if you use the app. It is actually FN by Lil TJ or TJ. But anyway, it's the acoustic version of that song. And um, from what I've dissected from the lyrics, it's about snitches in a gang. Um, the the regular version sounds like your generic trap song, which I do like trap music. I will go on the record saying that. Um, but it, it just, it, nothing really set it apart. However, the acoustic version, it gives a little bit of a different spin to things. It reminds me of kind of like, kind of like some XXX Tentation. I know that's not how you pronounce his name, but anyway, when he was at his peak, um, yeah, I got little hints of that, but it's really unique in the way that it's set up. So if you guys want to check that one out, um, do so. <laughs> Next, we're going to move into a couple of singles that I have missed from the 1975, one of my favorite bands of all time. The first one is called Me and You Together, and it's so feel good. It's just, it's a song that you can sit down and you can vibe out to. It makes me think of my significant other. Um, and it's, it's really just a good time to sit down and watch Matty Healy uh, 
has stated that Notes is gonna be one of their most versatile albums and every single that they've put out thus far have had a very different feel uh, to them. Of course, they had the metal song with People. Um, they had kind of the more laid back one in Me and You Together. And then we have another song that they released titled The Birthday Party. And this uh, really makes me think of the pastel I like it when you sleep for you are so beautiful yet so unaware of it album. Um, it, it really brings me uh, to tears every time I listen to it because it's about Maddie reminiscing on his problems with addiction and how the internet can help you cope with it, but at the same time, uh, risk it being an addiction in and of itself. Um, and it's very melodic and beautiful, laid back, not like Me and You Together, uh, but more like some of the songs on the Pastel album, like I said. So uh, out of all of the songs so far, uh, I, I, of course I like People <laughs> second best, but the Birthday Party is probably the one that speaks to me. Uh, the most. Speaking of throwbacks, uh, how about a Mayday Parade song on Seb's singles? Wow. <laughs> Mayday Parade have released a new track, their first one after Sunnyland, I believe, um, called It Is What It Is, and this is your typical Mayday Parade song. Uh, <laughs> It's something that 13 year old me would sit in his room and rock out and uh, cry to at night. <laughs> so um, it's just about coming to terms with the heartbreak of a relationship and um, kind of trying to put it off as it's over, it's done, we can grieve for a little bit, but I want to be done grieving. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really like Mayday Parade and the nostalgia factor is always there for me. I still listen to songs from all of their albums. They had that weird different Black Lines one that like embodied like 90s alternative, but then they just decided to go back to their pop punk roots. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I don't know how long they can rely on the nostalgia factor seriously, but there's always going to be broken hearted teenagers. So perhaps they can kind of ride this one out a little bit. Melanie Martinez has released a new song, well, about two and a half to three months ago, uh, called Copycat, and it seems to deal with the allegations brought against her and people leeching off of her for fame. Um, I don't want to take a side in this. Of course, it's a very controversial topic um, that they're dealing with, but I think Melanie handled this in an okay way. Um, of course, her response was very frowned upon. She didn't really ever state that she was in the right until now, and I do believe that it's a little late to be bringing it back up. But the song overall is a good song, obviously relying on the crybaby themes uh, prevalent through both of her albums. Um, and I think I'm getting to the point with her music where I just want to see something different. I know I'm not necessarily the main demographic, uh, however, I do think that artists now and again should kind of try to change up her style. She did add new elements in K through 12, but it would be interesting just to see kind of how she takes it uh, if she were to go in a completely different direction. And before you leave, no, we are not in 2009. 
because the gorillas have released what I personally, personally believe to be their best song to date. They have came out, came out, they have came out. They have come out with a new song with a uh, slow tie called Momentary Bliss. And it's just, it's Gorilla's punk rock. And I think it's really, really good. It reminds me a lot of their, uh, of their old school stuff, kind of pre- giving artists a chance to shine through their name. Of course, still doing this. I, I, I think that almost every song on this new album uh, coming out has a feature, uh, but it just sounds a little bit more like Gorillaz um, in a weird way. And I think that that's something that I personally have been waiting for for a very long time. So if there is any song that I would check out more than the others on this list, it would probably be uh, Momentary Bliss by Gorillaz featuring Slow But to end it all, aside from a few album recommendations that will be right at the end of the video, um, we have to talk about Dance Gavin Dance. As many of you know, uh, my favorite band of all time alongside Penny Disco. But Dance Kevin Dance have announced that their new album Afterburner will be coming out in April and they have given us a sneak peek with the song Prisoner. Um, I always get very anxious when Dance Kevin Dance releases a lead single from their uh, upcoming albums, uh, but each time I am not disappointed and this time is no different. <laughs> Prisoner's good, guys. We can calm down. We can all, we can all calm down. Nobody listens to them except for me. And I need to calm down. Okay. Um, but no, um, you have the post-hardcore elements. You have a little bit of the funk and the bass that Dance Gavin Dance is known for. John Mess has obviously been working on his sing screaming more and more and more, and he's god tier at this point. He's, he's so good at screaming. Tillian is using a lot more of his lower vocal range than he used to, and I think his voice has progressed beautifully. Um, Prisoner by Dance Gavin Dance. If you are a post-hardcore fan, it is an absolute essential. Now, before we leave, just a couple of those album and EP recommendations uh, that I have mentioned previously. Landon Tours is back with a new AI640 EP. If you guys don't know what AI640 is, it is about a robot who has taken over the world and wants to eliminate all of humanity. It's very, very heavy and deals with some dark topics. It's honestly a hard listen, but also that's only if you can understand the lyrics. Uh, but no, Landon, it's phenomenal. Uh, his versatility is almost unmatched with any artist I have ever seen. And um, AI640 is one of the heaviest albums that I will listen to. And this, I believe is the third part of the EP, or the third EP in the series that is AI640. If you like metal music, definitely check this out. If you do not, steer clear because you will get your eardrums blown out. Before I leave, I just want to shout out Galleons and their new Metropolis EP. Galleons is an Australian-Russian post-hardcore band 
I believe they're signed to Blue Swan Records under Will Swan and the Dance Gavin Dance label. Um, these guys sound a lot like Dance Gavin Dance with Johnny Craig, but they're not awful. Um, <laughs> uh, they they really uh, they they embrace the chaos in the music. Uh, the breakdowns are very messy, but intentionally so, and. Um, I think it's a really cool take on the whole swan core genre. Okay, thank you guys for watching and listening. I will try to make videos as soon as I can. I'm Seb, this has been Superficial Charm, and I will talk to you again.